Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. This is Emi Chicken of Team Pandori. Can't wait for the new point and click adventure game to drop? How about taking a look at the many available on ScumVM? We've put together a top 10 ScumVM game list for you to try out. To make a more varied list, we have lumped titles of the same series together, so please keep this in mind. Let's get to it. Number 10, Grim Fandango. Jump into the land of the dead and star as Manny Calavera. Being one of the first titles to merge point and click adventure game with 3D, it is amazing to see that the graphics even hold up today. The noir inspired aesthetic and music truly transform this title into a work of art. We can recommend this, but please be wary that the tank controls are not the greatest, and Grim Fandango is known to be too difficult for many, as illogical puzzles are aplenty. If you're a pretty girl, I can help any time. I'm John Wu, massage man. Thanks for the offer, John. Any time. At number nine, King's Quest II, Romancing the Throne. Continuing the well-known Taiping adventure franchise, we are brought into this fairy tale world. With the big bad wolf, mermaids, bat witches, and permadeaths, it makes King's Quest II a very difficult title. However, don't let that put you off. As playing this with a child, it can be a very rewarding and fun learning tool that many will overlook. Remember, there are guides online, so check it out. At number 8, Beneath a Steel Sky. Needing a whole 15 floppy disks on the Amiga, this is a corker of a game. Engaging from the introduction, we're thrown into a dystopian nightmare, running from those that want you dead. On the surface, it does look a bit dark, but don't let that dissuade you. There is a lot of comedy in this title, and the story has an incredible amount of depth. If you like sci-fi with your clickety clicks, this one Welcome may be back, for you. Joey. Is this the best shell you could find? Listen, we're in deep trouble. You've turned me into a vacuum cleaner. Number seven, Leisure Suit Larry. In this spiritual sequel to Soft Pawn, we throw on our trendy getup and go on the pull. The thing is, our main hero is totally useless in every single way. Provided we can get through the age check at the start of the game, this is a very humorous title. If you like the comedy of Beavis and Butthead, this game is for you. Oh, by the way, if you're not over 50 and live in America, you may need some help in getting through the protection at the start. If you go to Al Lowe's website, the questions and answers are all there. Number six, Goblins 2. In this truly magical adventure, we guide two heroes in rescuing the Prince Buffoon. The bright palette, insane artwork, and hilarious animations are a sight to behold, and the music always suits the scenes perfectly. There is a nice learning curve to this game, so the puzzles start off easy and then gradually get more difficult. Little known fact is that the two main characters originally are supposed to be rivals, one good and one evil. This was eventually changed to have both of them work together to solve the puzzles in this neat little title. At number 5, Putt-Putt joins the parade. Star as a car, pick up stuff and help others in this short adventure game. Being directed for the younger audience, it is a fine introduction to point-and-click adventuring for preschoolers. There are a few lessons we can learn from Putt-Putt. For example, how to beep your horn to make anything move, and you'll also be paid handsomely for a terrible job at mowing the lawn. Excellent. Here's a coin for you. Thanks, Mr. Thunder. Thanks, the buggy. At number four, Sam and Max hit the road. Starring Sam, 
the smart dog, and Max, the insane rabbit. This is a cop drama at its best. Solve the mystery of the missing Bigfoot by driving all over the United States, finding clues and chasing leads. This talky point-and-click adventure game is full of comedic dialogue, great animation, and insane puzzles. LucasArts did a great job with most, if not all, games of this era. Sam and Max Hit the Road really did showcase how well PC games can look in the early 90s. Extra value is also included with the coloring books and the minigames. Number three, Zack McGrecken and the Alien Mindbenders. Zack wakes up from a nightmare, which prophesizes and boots our journey to Mars into action. You may notice that the art is very reminiscent of Maniac Mansion, which it shares some similarities. But in Zack McGrecken, we can travel the world. A three-headed squirrel, smack it down with an electric guitar. Microwave on the flight, explode an egg in it. This is really only a taste of what crazy antics you can face in this game starring a tabloid reporter. Being released on many systems, we prefer the extremely creepy Amiga version. With the original game being released in 1988, this game has an incredible fan base, and many unofficial sequels have been released. At number two, The Secret of Monkey Island. We play as Guybrush Threepwood, and our goal is to become a pirate. That quickly ramps up into a rescue mission and your journey to Monkey Island. Pretty much everything is on point in this game. The artwork, story, music, dialogue, and comedic timing creates the recipe to which many see as the first perfect point-and-click adventure game. Not too easy, nor difficult, this is the perfect introduction to the genre. It may be obvious now, but at release, most people in Europe didn't actually know that this was heavily inspired by the Pirates of the Caribbean ride at Disney World. Yar. Yar indeed. At number one, Day of the Tentacle. In this sequel, we go back to the mansion. The goal? To travel through time and stop the purple tentacle from taking over the world. Without a doubt, the art style was somewhat crazy, using shapes that bend reality. It was a showcase back then, and still looks great today. The characters are truly charming, the story is brilliant, and the game itself is an extremely well thought out ride of a lifetime. A true classic. Do you agree with our list? Or did we miss something out? One thing for sure is that ScumVM has an incredible library of games, so why not crack it open? There's plenty to choose from. As always, I just want to say a quick thank you to all of those on our Patreon. You guys are the best, and we appreciate all of your support. Thank you. If you too would like to support our work, please consider joining up. We create reviews, guides, and help others try and get their most bang for buck. We also pull apart the Pandora boxes and the A500 Mini. If you enjoyed this video, please give us a like, subscribe, and maybe comment down below on your thoughts to the new Return of Monkey Island. Personally, I'm pretty excited. Anyway, this has been Emi Chicken of Team Pandory, and I'll catch you on the next one. Ta-ra! Yeah, indeed.